The word tragedy doesn't seem to do it justice with the news that Dylan Quirk, the 24-year-old uh, Tipperary hurler and Canolty Ross Moorman, passed away on Friday evening, taken ill during the Kilroan McDonough's uh, club match in Semple Stadium. Just a few minutes before uh, taken ill, he had set up a goal for, for Canolty Ross Moore and you know, they were having a great ding-dong battle with Killer One and obviously the game ended up being abandoned and, of course, rightfully so. And Tipperary have taken the decision since to cancel all games this weekend as a matter of respect, which, of course, is the right thing to do. But just when a player is so young, 24 years of age, anyone who's dying well before their time, it's just incredibly difficult to accept and extend uh, our deepest sympathies and thoughts and prayers to uh, the family and close friends of Dylan Quirk. Uh, just... A terrible thing for for any person and family and people to suffer it just it's going to leave a huge mark on uh Clinolty and, and all and ross moore and all of his friends and family just tipperary released a statement last night and um it just went to the effect of tipperary ga extends its heartfelt and sincere sympathies to dan hazel shannon kelly and the extended quirk family also to the Clinolty ross moore ga club and his teammates on the sad and tragic passing of Clonolty Ross Moore and Tipperary hurler Dylan Quirk. Dylan became ill during Friday evening's County Senior Hurling Championship game between Clonolty Ross Moore and Killeran McDonough's in Sample Stadium and was taken to Tipperary University Hospital in Clonmel where he passed away. Tipperary GA wished to thank all those who attended to Dylan in Sample Stadium and in the Tipperary University Hospital this evening. As a marker respect to Dylan, Tip have called off all the games. So that's just confirming as well. So just one of those things where a player you know, he goes and plays a match and then you just never think that they're not going to come home after that safe and sound. And just very hard to get your head around. And just again, just back to the age thing, 24, hale and hearty. And I think he played in the Monster Championship this year, was uh, certainly coming on. Looked like he'd be a player that Tipperary would be building around for the next uh, number of years. Similarly with Clonolty Ross Moore, you know, you have a county player there and everyone looks up to this player and think we'll build our team around this guy. And it's just hard to believe that that won't be the case. I mean, it's going to leave just such a huge hole, obviously, both on the pitch, of course, which is irrelevant, really, but obviously off the pitch as well. Just uh, horrendous. But um, just some of the things that he did do, like he won an All-Ireland Under-20 title at wing back. He won a county title, huge for Clonalty Ross Moore and helping them across the line against Nina in 2018. A, a guy with his whole life ahead of him. And I really just felt that he was he had established himself this year uh, under Colin Bonner and of course Liam Cahill knows him well and I'm sure he would have featured heavily again going forward but um, you know even just seeing on some of the Tipperary players Instagrams over the summer I think he was away in Croatia with a number of them no doubt very close to some of those guys too um, made his debut for for Tipperary in the 2020 league and uh, I remember speaking to him after the game against Watford he'd been named corner forward and he scored four points and he just gave a brilliant performance that day and um, i might just read out some of the interview that i did with him afterwards and some of it is is around some of his health so i'm not prejudicing anything in terms of that but just kind of giving you some of that information that you may or may not already be aware of but um and just he was talking about how his chances of you know getting into the the temporary team stall after the under 20 uh, ones in 2018 and you know uh, that's what we'll come on to. But just first off, it was just talking about scoring his four points in the 24 point to 216 win over Watford. And he just said, it was unreal. I waited all my life for this. It's a dream come true. Just to play with the lads, the likes of Noel McGrath and Seamus Callan. It's a dream. I was lucky enough to get a chance today and it could have been anyone on the panel. We're training hard at the moment. So it was nice to get a chance. And he was absolutely brilliant that day. And I thought he was going to nail his colours down to the mass, but it, it didn't really happen for him. But you know, for a while, it was a bit of a distant dream for him because after he had to step away from the, the game for a while because of his health. So I was asking him about this and he, like he was great when he was talking about it, just really giving of the information. And he goes, <clears throat> I had a virus called myocarditis last year. This is him talking in 2020, referring back to 2019. And that took a lot out of me. So I had to take three, uh, three or four months off. I wasn't allowed to do a thing. So I took last year off and I got back in with the club and it was nice to get a call in by Liam Sheedy this year and I just wanted to give it my best shot. And then just to read out more of the article um, I wrote, it wasn't a simple case of getting an illness and quickly returning to Hurland despite his best efforts. And he explains the impact of myocarditis and his winding road back to the training field in Dr. Morris Park. He goes, the lining of your heart gets swollen. It comes under stress. It can often happen when your immune system is low. 
I collapsed at home one day after work and I went down to the hospital and after a good few tests, they eventually found out what was the problem. I had to take away physical contact, no training for three months, and then I was able to come back in. I was coming back in last year and the boys had their hard pre-season and I just wasn't able to catch up, so I thought it was best to take a break for a year. I'm happy enough with where I am now. I don't know what was going on at the start he had it. I was keeping calm, didn't think much of it, um, but I suppose the doctors were saying otherwise to the mother and father. I didn't think much. I wanted to come back after two or three weeks. It's grand now. I'm all good again. And I look, again, I'm, I'm not sure exactly the ins and outs of what happened on Friday night. And I'm not trying to, to prejudice that at all. I'm basically just giving a bit of background of the guy and talking to him. And like he even added a little bit more and just and, and he was talking about he was always trying to paint the positive of the of the situation and him making his comeback and how it, it was a bit tense at times from a course and he said i collapsed and then i came back after three months and i collapsed again and was taken down in the ambulance again that's why i had to take a break when i came back then i got shingles then with the club my immune system was very low the doc is very good as well so he keeps track well i still do tests but it's all 100 percent now it was just relaxing and taking a break for a few months and eventually your immune system starts building back up and you just give uh you just take it bit by bit so tragically, uh, and again, I'm not sure the ins and outs, I wasn't there and, and obviously I have no expertise in this side of things, but just this is just given a background on Dylan and what he went through even just to get back in with Tipperary again, because after those going through those very scary times, brilliant feat for him to get back in. And he really impressed me at times with Tipperary this year. And I, I really thought he was a player that, uh, that Tipperary were, were going to build around. And Timmy Hammersley, of course, his club mate for so many years, transferred to Belly Bowden St. Enders uh, in 20, for 2022, he was talking to Dermot Crow in a newspaper and he goes, the big thing for me with Dylan is that is the innocence he had, the true love of playing, the true love of the club. It really came across. We trained together, we went to the gym together, we ran together, we did ball session, uh, ball wall sessions together along with others. There was a core group that trained really hard and Dylan was one of them. He always had incredible talent, but his work rate brought him to the next level. His dedication to training. And he never lost that innocent boyish attitude. He never did. And that's what made him so beautiful. And even when playing with the Tipperary team, he was still that happy person, a gentle soul. I made a decision to transfer this year to Barry Bowden St. Enders. And it's not about me, but I felt a deep hurt that I wasn't on the field with him yesterday as well. Because for years and years, I was on the field with him. And it's tough to grasp that. We can exaggerate these things when someone passes on, but there's no exaggeration in this case. He was a gentle soul, a gentle giant who really did treat people very well, no matter who they were. And I think it's because of that attitude that he was so good at sport as well. And there really is um, yes, a huge outpouring um, across the, the country, the GA community, especially. You can see it everywhere across the board. And, you know, even those pictures that were doing the rounds, I mean, news was was filtering out that he was um, he, he had uh, taken ill yesterday. And I was looking up pictures of him on on Twitter and you can see pictures of him, you know, holding the cup for the West Tipperary Championship. And, uh, you know, it's just heartbreaking to think that he's gone. So just a couple of people have commented in here. Scooby D says, absolutely shocking and so, so sad. God rest him and give strength to his family and friends at this most difficult time. A red lad, all that's hit hard, but this one hit me particularly hard for someone I don't know personally. You think of a guy your own age playing the sport, you do passing away. And uh, Kyle TV, one, two, three, heartbreaking news. God bless Dylan and his family, shocked and stunned RIP. So um, again, we just extend our heartfelt sympathies and thoughts and prayers to uh, the family and friends of Dylan Quirk. Just a huge loss and gone too soon.